And if you're the dad of a newborn, babies obviously do this very safely. Make great weights. So obviously, if you have got um, <laughs> if you have got music on, then um, yes. you can um, combine bonding with them with a bit of a workout. Okay, just steady steady lifts in the air to the left and right. One of the most important concepts in resistance training is something called progressive overload, where you increase weight over the, over time. <laughs> and as the baby and toddlers grow, that fits the bill. It's perfect. I think we mm. see taking time out to go for a run or to do a workout as a treat, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're training for your mental well-being, for your health, and to kind of be the best parent you can in that moment, which is the goal isn't lose a stone or lose two stone the goal is to embed these habits in there and then of course by following that process um the, the results will come but it's not a and we're rolling welcome to the parenting truths podcast today i'm joined by founder of fatherfitpt.com and dad of two chris beavers thanks for joining me chris thank you tom thank you for having me so it seems your focus in life is to help get dads fit but what I really love about your message in general is the focus on what a fit and healthy lifestyle brings so it's less about the physical appearance and you tend to talk about the the door opening to you know boosting mental health positively impacting mood reducing stress etc um, and obviously the knock-on effect of all of this is um, dads are able to be more present and more hands-on with their little ones would you say that's the main driver behind what you do? Yeah, well, 100%. So um, previously, the place I worked at before setting up Father Fit, it was very much body composition focused. And so, you know, we, we'd focus on getting people in kind of normal, looking normal, sort of, you know, what, what, what you'd see on the street to ripped cover model physique. And it was a lot of fun. But what I quickly realized when I became a parent myself is um, <laughs> there's more to life than abs. And actually, um, you, you know, being a dad and being a parent, it doesn't matter, um, you know, how, how good you look. The most important thing is being able to play, play on the floor with your little one. So, you know, you're not injured or, you know, having confidence by the pool is another big one. Or um, just knowing that you're in a healthy position to be there for your kids as as they grow up. And, you know, you're not going to have or you or you reduce the risk of any kind of unwanted turns in in life um, if you will it starts from day one doesn't it i remember when my wife filed pregnant with our first i think about four months before i was like on a mission just to just to get a lot healthier in life because i knew we were about to enter into the zone of like no yeah. sleep and <laughs> needing to just be on the ball 24 7 so it definitely starts from day one doesn't it yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think also for a lot of people, having kids is that kind of realization where you're growing up in your twenties, you're working in a corporate job, and you're entertaining clients, so you're going out, you're socialising a lot, and then, um, you know, w w when 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 as you say, your wife falls pregnant, you're like, oh, actually, there's there's, <laughs> I've got a bigger responsibility than just me, and um, just you you know, going out partying. I wanna. I want to be healthy, not just for myself, but to be a positive role model for kids, right? So before we dive into all things fitness, just to provide some context, you have a two-year-old and a three-month-old, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Bo is just over two and Poppy is now, well, she, she's now five months old. Um, but yeah, so uh, lots of fun in the thick of it again, uh, in the thick of the newborn stages, which is has has lo lots of ups and lots of more challenging parts but overall it's it's you know you know it's going to end everything's just a phase so it's absolutely delightful at the moment yeah so we've got um a five-year-old and a f almost five month old so okay. um i'm right there with you uh yeah. in the lack of sleep and the, all, all of the rest yeah. of it but <laughs> how have you found that transition from one to two we we found it easier than we thought we would and i i, I figured we, we had it the easy way so Bo was quite a challenging baby he um he it was difficult to settle him so we would be carrying him rocking him you know walking around the bedroom trying to put him down we could never seem to put him down so we we found it quite difficult with Bo to get sleep and to um get into a rhythm and routine because it was just difficult to kind of let him settle whereas Poppy, yeah. 
um, we, we've, we've been incredibly lucky with Poppy. She, she is that NCT picture perfect baby where you look <laughs> at the day and it says they sleep 18 hours and you know, you're like, oh wow, you know, it's not that difficult. And so the transition from one to two was easier than we thought it would be because of that number one. But yeah. also, um, I, I, I think we, 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 we were just more confident in everything that we were doing. Like changing nappies wasn't, you know, this technical task we were trying to do, which, you know, isn't quite the same with the rolled up towel because the legs kick. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's a little bit more, more challenging than that. Um, but we, we, we were definitely a lot more sort of confident with it, which I think we're lucky. And um, with, with Bo as well, so I'd be interested to know how it was with Luca and Mia for you. But with yep. Bo, the, the age he was, he um he kind of realized what was happening, but he 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 obviously doesn't understand the second and third consequences of it, where, you know, all of a sudden he's not gonna get all of our attention. He's not the center of our world. There's, you know, another baby that we have to tend to. And we again we, we were lucky with this in that I figure there's always three options. One is, one's the baby going home, send it back to the hospital. <laughs> the other is indifference, and you know, neither here nor there, just occasionally looks, but doesn't make a fuss or do anything. And then the third is um, just wants to do everything, which is great, and you want to get them involved. But then, of course, there are other risks where you know, if they want to hold the baby and haven't quite got the strength, you don't want them to drop the baby. Um, yeah. But, but Bo was sort of indifferent. So it meant that um, it was easier for us to tend to Poppy without Bo wanting to kind of jump in or without Bo wanting to kind of push Poppy away. So okay. we, we, for, for us, we found the transition from zero to one much harder than the transition from one to two. But I, I mean, with most of the dads I worked with, because I was asking every single one of them before Poppy came along, like, how did you find it? And you know those that had it the other way or had it a lot more challenging how how was luca when mia came along so luca was four and a half years old so obviously a lot more de developed than a two-year-old so we journeyed through the entire pregnancy with him so he had nine months to prepare he would uh get a box and fill it with some of his baby toys that he think he thought mia might like um oh, so by the time she came around um, e e even when, because Laura was induced, even when we were sort of in the hospital, we were FaceTiming him. So he was very consciously Amazing. aware of, of what was going on. Um, not to say it's been smooth sailing. I mean, um, there's been Never times is. where he's said, you know, we love Mia more than him. And he's been um, okay. challenging us a little bit. Um, just trying to understand that because he's had two parents and their undivided attention for four and a half years yeah. um, and he's that much more developed so he is consciously aware which is a benefit but also the fact that he is aware you know yeah. he, he knows he's much more aware of the transition because I think some of the sure. dads I speak to who have a lot y younger kids as they turn three and four it's sort of all of the, all they're aware of that they're just all they can remember is having a sibling um, yeah where is is a little bit different for Luca, but um, very fortunate, very lucky. So I'm just happy that um, we've got two healthy little ones, and we get the chance to to of have course. two. Yeah. How did you react when Luca would say that you love Mia more than him? Um, so it was something we sort of was aware that we knew would come at some point because I've read a lot about it and I've spoken okay. to a lot of parents. Um, but it's just reassuring him sort of letting him understand that because it, it, it's more around the frustration of Mia's crying um yeah. you know to okay. go from quite a calm house to a lot yeah, of crying <laughs> um we sort of just need to let him know that you know crying is Mia's only way of communicating and if we want that crying to stop we need to tend to Mia's needs so yeah. if, he, if he wants us to roll around on the floor wrestling or wants us to play with Lego then you know unfortunately that will have to wait and t to be fair i've had a lot of people reach out to me um who have gone through the same thing and one tip they provided me with which is really cool because i fell into this uh, a little bit was um not using the baby as an excuse um so that was a really good tip because naturally like i just said there you uh, uh, you know i was saying 
I'd love to play with you, but you have to wait because Mia needs me. So it's just coming mm. out up with creative ways to not using the baby as the excuse. Um, yeah. So maybe that resentment will build. All good fun. Um, w- one of the amazing things I've found since starting this podcast is all parents are just on their own unique journey. Some have got three under three, some have got one child and they're happy with that. Yeah. You know, so it's really cool just to speak to lots of different parents all in a different stage of their parenting journey. And what I wanted to touch on with you was, are you able to take us back to where you were with your partner before you decided to become parents um, and what that transition into parenting life looked like for you? Yeah, sure. So uh, re- rewind to um, the pre- pre-COVID era, um, early 2020, we were, uh, I proposed in May 2019. In June 2019, we had a kind of really small, quick wedding in, in Dubai where we were living at the time because um, we, we just kind of got it done. It helped with the visa at the time. It wasn't a shotgun wedding. Um, and then uh, we, we planned this big UK wedding in July 2020, which, of course, now looking back, we know is a um, you know terrible time to have a wedding. So around April 2020, when we realized, OK, the wedding's probably not going to happen. And if it does happen, it's only going to be a really small group of people. Most of the people we want to come, grandparents, um, we, we won't want them to come for the brisk you know that it poses to their health yeah so we we decided to actually scrap that we we planned to have the wedding and then start trying after that and so we planned we we ended up just scrapping the wedding um and then just trying for for um bow uh well a, a baby who turned out to be bow uh we, we're really lucky because we got fell pregnant first time um and then naturally the next conversation was where do we want to be where at the time as i said we're living in dubai like do we want to be in dubai do we want to bring our kids up here or do we want to move back to the uk and for katie and i we both grew up in villages and in countryside with you know trees and fields around us um similar to where you live and you know it's absolutely amazing whereas in yeah in in, in dubai they, they have nature but it's different nature it's sand dunes it's beaches you can drive across the UAE to a place called Hatta where they have mountains, but it's very, very, very different. So, so we, we decided to move back to the UK. The, the other, you know, big reason for that was, of course, being close to family, which at the time in Dubai is a seven hour flight. And um, so so we, we then moved back to the UK and um, had Bo here. And now we're settled very happily in the UK. Did that come with a career change for you? Because I know uh, Father Fit PT, is, is that a new venture for yourself um, off the back of starting a family to give you a little bit more flexibility to be home a lot more or? Um, so Fa- Father Fit PT, was, well, that, that's one of the main reasons personally for me that I set up Father Fit PT. So okay. um, I, I, I've been a PT for over 10 years and for six and a half years I worked at um, they're called the world's leading personal trainers and it's they're basically a private body composition gym and i worked with them in london then i worked with them in dubai and then when i moved back to the uk i was still with them but i transitioned from the gym to um an office-based role because i thought that would help with the work-life balance um and and that meant that we were then based uh, up north just just shy of manchester one of the main reasons why i wanted to set up father fit bt was what well, were well, two reasons one Personally, for me, when I was working in the office, I was, I was in the office for four days a week, and I would see Bo for forty-five minutes during the day. And I, I know, I know some people, you know, probably not the kind of person that listens to this podcast because of the audience that you have. And and I think it's good. Some people enjoy going to work because they get that space. They they you know don't yeah. really want to come back to the family and you know they, all of the pressures that come with it. But for me, I that grated on me and I thought if there's something I can do to make that change um, and I don't try it I you know I don't think I'd forgive myself so that was one of the main reasons why I set up Father Fit PT the the bigger driver was um, when Bo came along we were in I think the third lockdown in the UK and um, so so it's February 2021 yeah 
Um, so all gentle shirt. Uh, new baby chaos. Uh, I, I lost my way a bit with my kind of health and fitness, training regularly, focusing well on nutrition and lo looking into research, talking to other dads. It like is so common for people to let their health slip. You know, there's lots of confounding factors. Feeling too guilty to take time out to train. Um, obviously, this big life change, routines change. Um, and I thought, actually, you know, if I if I can do online personal training for dads, that's going to give me the freedom that I want. And I can also help other people who are in a similar situation who don't have the same knowledge and experience that I do. So when I was looking at the other offerings which were available for dads, there's a lot of sort of military, shouting based style kind yeah. of approaches. And um, I mean, if, if you're a father, you're a grown adult, you don't need someone shouting at you telling you to do something, you know you should be doing it. Um, and I, I think the way I, I coach is a lot more, it's a lot more compassionate and it's a lot more understanding. I mean, if, if a client were to tell me I couldn't do the workout today because my kid was off sick from nursery and you know, this happened, I'd be like, okay, let's find a solution around it. So that was the other reason because I thought there's this massive kind of gap in the market where if you, if you Google how to be fit and healthy, there's 10 different people saying this is the way to do it and that go over there don't do it his way because that's wrong and actually yeah. you know there's so many different ways you can do it and there's no right or wrong way it's just finding a way that fits into your lifestyle around your family and around your work commitments and um, that was the other kind of big driver for me to set up father fit pt i think that you touched there on on the guilt so i think we mm. see taking time out to go for a run or to do a workout as a treat don't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. So since in, in the last five months, so I did a lot of running last year because I was training for a half marathon. And since me has been born, I went for my first run in five months, like two weeks ago. And that felt like Fantastic. a real treat. I, I, I've not completely stopped with my fitness because we've got um, a spin bike in the house. So my wife and I are sort of, like you just said, working to our means. We had a chat mm. last night and my wife put our son to bed and she was like right I'll do a 20 minute spin when we were talking after obviously on the system you can select your timings and she was like I wanted to do I wanted to do a 40 minute spin but obviously that wouldn't have given me time to come down and chat with you and the fact that we're just trying to carve out 20 minutes of our day to do a bit of fitness is crazy <laughs> the guilt is huge but I think what you said about um working with parents to sort of cultivate habits based on where they are at the moment in their life is quite an important one. Touching on the guilt as well, I think a lot of things, it, it's about reframing it and looking at it in a way that is best for you and your family. So I, 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 would, I would put my mortgage on saying your wife was in a better headspace after that spin session and she's probably in a better headspace today to yeah. um, handle the, the joys, the trials, the tribulations of parenting today because of that and yeah um which it sounds like you're doing parents kind of tag team and they're like look you go take 30 minutes and you do what you need to do and then you know i can do that later today or tomorrow i think that's so important because then it just puts you both in a better headspace um yeah because you, you know w with the training you do especially in the newborn days you're not training for this massive <laughs> performance or this huge event you're you're, you're, you're training for your mental well-being for your health and to kind of be the best parent you can in that moment which is um ne ne never easy but i think you know with the fact that y you don't have much sleep with the newborn it, it's almost even more important and how do you help dads because one thing i've noticed in my adult life is when i look back over the my fitness of the last 10 years it sort of comes in waves and you sort mm -hmm. of go all or nothing so yeah. um, my weight fluctuates between like 16 stone and 14 stone um, mm -hmm. so I would go all in for like four months and then you know I'd probably burn out and then I would just take my foot off the gas and then I'd just come back up to my normal weight which I'd, yeah. ca I'd call it you know that's just eating what I want yeah. um, limited exercise but since being in my 30s, I've appreciated the importance of just maintaining 
um, sort of a decent level of fitness. Then if you do want to train for that half marathon or train for a run, is a lot less effort to get there, if you know what I mean. Do you notice yeah. working with parents that they tend to, to go in those waves? Yeah, it, it, it's really common to, to go in those waves because as you say, you, you have this massive kind of peak of motivation which you just utilize and get to your goal or you have an event that you're kind of going to and that's some that's one of the kind of tactics that I have with my clients you know after, after the initial fat loss phase if that's what they want we, we focus on a an event and and then we, we can, can keep that going but the first couple of things that I do with clients is a couple of thought experiments one is called find your why which is basically writing down why you want to make the changes and um it's really interesting when when they kind of come through and the trick is to kind of just keep asking yourself why so you're like you know what why do you want to lose weight or change your body so oh well i want to be around there you know for my kids but as they get older okay why because you know this happened okay why 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 and you you get to really kind of strong emotional reason and that's quite important because initially you know exactly what that is and you 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 use that to drive you to where you want to go but you know five weeks six weeks down the line when you're three or four kilos lighter um or a half a stone lighter that the the position of pain you're in isn't as painful because you're 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 not there anymore so this is a kind of a good reminder as to kind of why you're pushing on um and then the second thing which i like to do is for parents or, or the 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 dads I work with to think about their identity and kind of what habits they have for themselves and you know what they think a, a, a healthy dad or a healthy version of them what those habits what habits will that person have um, you know when they're at that goal and, and then that's kind of like the north star if you will it's like okay we're not the goal isn't lose a stone or lose two stone the, the goal is to embed these habits in there and then of course, by following that process, um, the, the results will come, but it's not a, oh, cool, I've got to my goal, that's it. It's a, okay, we're gonna follow these habits, we're gonna keep trying to embed these. But when we get to that point, you, you know, that's then normal. Um, mm, and, yeah. and, and, and that's kind of what can make it stick. The, the goal isn't to get somewhere, that's it, see you later. The goal is to educate someone as to what they need to do day to day to get to where they need to be, but then also, coach them when they're there to on how to maintain it um the 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 other benefit to those kind of healthy habits is is the the obvious role modeling that happens with with their kids which which is so cool i mean i I, i've mentioned it a little bit on my social media but the amount of uh, photos i get from clients where they're doing press-ups with either their kid on their back or their kids doing press-ups too like it it's absolutely incredible and um you you know better than anyone how much kids absorb from kind of watching adults and and well watching parents and what we do and even if you're just doing like air squats in front of them or press ups they're going to think oh movement's like a normal thing to do and I should do it and and it's not going to be this weird far fetched thing later on in life which they're like oh I should be doing this it's sort of just ingrained into them I I I hope yeah, you're think... watching your wife on the spin bike really because then Luke would be like <laughs> yeah that's cool and the half marathon I mean sh- surely when you're training for the half marathon Luca took an interest yeah absolutely so um th- there's been endless funny examples so I decided to stop drinking alcohol whilst awesome. I was training because um I went for my first 5k run um because I was doing it for a charity um called saying goodbye and I puffed and blowed my way through that 5k run and I thought how am I going to run like 22 kilometers so I thought right let's just stick to a training plan I'll get there and slowly but surely I got there and I managed to finish the 20k or whatever it was in just over two hours which was really good for me Um, and I went 12 months without alcohol and even when we go out to a restaurant Mm. with Luca like he would say to the waiter like dad is not drinking cider today because he's training (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which is unbelievable for like a four-year-old to be saying that it sounds like small bite size um tweaks to your sort of lifestyle um slowly but surely mm. add up so it could be i don't know not eating four biscuits with a cup of tea at <laughs> night just ju- yeah. just those little things um i guess 
cultivate healthy habits would you say that's a place to start for parents who are struggling to find the motivation okay a couple of points on that what well, one is nutrition and then I'll, I'll, I'll touch on something to focus on if you're struggling for motivation because there, there's one lever there which is better than sort of anything else in, in my opinion yeah. so, so with, with the nutrition and, and fixing those health, healthy habits i think it's the same for kids that the, the best way to improve nutrition is to increase awareness of kind of what you're eating so we we need to when a client first comes to me um we frame calories and so if the if the goal is fat loss initially we we need to be in a calorie deficit every single diet works with a calorie deficit whether it's cutting out carbohydrates going low fat the five two where you fast for you know two days or have 500 calories whatever it is and um, every single diet works that way but what a lot of people don't work out at the start is how many calories they burn and how many calories they expend per day and what can affect that so the, the the baseline is your basal metabolic rate which is basically how many calories your body burns at rest it's like the blood circulation the circulatory system protein turnover um, all, all, all of the cellular reactions that that happen we can't really change that the biggest thing we can change is something called NEAT which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis and in short, it's basically how much you move around. So I know the fitness industry um, alienates a lot of people by saying, oh, you need to do 10,000 steps. You need to do this amount of steps. Um, it, in, in reality, it doesn't matter how many steps you do. The more, the better for health, for sure. Mm. But uh, as long as it's not, you know, ridiculous amounts like 40, 50,000. But um, that, that essentially affects how many calories you expend during the day. So the, the difference with, you know, a typical person doing seven and a half thousand steps a day on average across the week and doing twelve and a half thousand steps a day on average across the week is about six seven hundred calories additionally burnt per day what that means is it's you, you can eat more food basically and still yeah. get the results you want which is quite important there, there, there are other physiological benefits as well um you know most notably there's a, a, a little thing in your cells called mitochondria and and you end up producing more of these uh, things called mitochondria and they produce energy which can help energy as well help motivation and other things too but the the first thing i do is frame calories so we know how many calories a person needs to eat and then it, it's just tracking your food um, and then you'll look at those four biscuits and you're like oh crikey actually if if they're those really nice as kind of fox's chocolate chunk ones which are like 120 calories a biscuit you're like th th this is literally a meal like i could have a meal for the same amount of calories and then it's not a case of cut the biscuits out it's a okay maybe i only need one or you, you know or, or maybe it's not worth in, worth having them at all but it's that awareness that really kind of helps that habit change and you can't unlearn that as soon as i learned that my portion of granola is actually three portions of granola as it says on the box and it's the equivalent to two meals i was like i can't eat granola because i can't have one portion and, and control it um yeah that that that's kind of the 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 point about nutrition it's just start tracking your food you don't have to track your food forever but as soon as you understand what a portion size is and how that affects your body all of a sudden it's so much easier to uh, then maintain when you get to that point where you're like okay i want to maintain i'm happy here um, yeah and then wh when it comes to motivation um and this is very tongue-in-cheek for the positions that both of us are in at the moment right it's about focusing on sleep um okay <laughs> yeah. um but what what i always say to, to dads who have newborns and for myself at the moment is, is focusing on sleep quality because we can't you know we, we can't always decide to go to bed when we want and you know we're not going to have unbroken night's sleep but that there are different behavioral things we can do um potentially supplements as well uh, nothing over the counter purely magnesium glycinate that can help sleep quality um and then if we're sleeping better ev we all know if we sleep through the night and have good quality sleep everything in life is easier yeah but we also know we, you know we, we're not going to be able to get the amount of sleep that we want and and that's okay we just need to focus on sleep quality so we're essentially recharging our batteries as much as we can. So going back to the um, awareness point around nutrition, I think mm -hmm. um, 
as with anything in life, if you're aware, and it's more the realization um, that, you know, it, it was only until I was in my late 20s that I realized how calorific biscuits were. Yeah. <laughs> and, I ate, and I ate a lot of biscuits. Um, it's just you know, a bad day, isn't it? I know. And, and like the average person <laughs> might not be aware that, you know, the four biscuits that you eat in the um in the evening is the same as like a medium bowl of spaghetti bolognese or something like yeah. that i'm not sure if they equate but um yeah i think once you gain as much knowledge as you can um you're then able to make calculated decisions because f- if i go back to when i was training for my half marathon i was burning so many calories running like three or four times a week i didn't change too much about my when it came to my day-to-day nutrition i maybe did cut out the biscuits but you know i certainly when we went out for food i'd have a nice dessert and things like that so you you can definitely have a fit and healthy lifestyle without just eating um super healthy foods all of the time if we go back to habits for dads what sort of the common unhealthy habits that, that you see crop up quite regularly um in the dads you work with um so a lot of it comes down to coping mechanisms and it's kind of right understanding what they are shining you know the light of awareness on them and then trying to try trying to kind of modify them in, in a way that kind of works and you know i i can highlight it and i can say look this is kind of what we can do and then you know it's a back and forth about finding what works but one of the biggest ones is um something called re- revenge sleep time procrastination or revenge okay. bedtime procrastination Yep. which is um we all do we all do it myself included I, I i did it like twice last week where um you want some time for yourself because you don't get much alone time and you think i'm just gonna go to bed you know an hour later and and you just kind of eat into that that bedtime and you, you know for, for me at least i scrolled instagram or you know i watched something on netflix which then r- really doesn't help sleep quality whereas if we can get a really good bedtime routine quite often a lot of the things that we find stressful and trigger us we're able to handle them better because we've had you know a little bit better better quality sleep so that's um that that that, that's probably the main one um and then the other one with the coping mechanism is having two or three beers or drinks before going to bed and again it's the same thing it just affects sleep and sleep quality which then makes that harder the next day um yeah they're, they're probably the main ones. Uh, there, there, there's a lot of parallels between parenting and healthy habits and how we talk to ourselves. So um, one of the big things I always want to break with clients, which can show up, is this all or nothing attitude. And so, you know, you, you, you have a lunch, which is, I don't, I don't want to say off plan, because you can make anything work, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, but you have a lunch, which isn't this I. I the ideal perfect healthy you know picture of what you want to do and then yeah. you think do you know what? it doesn't matter i am just going to have whatever i want for dinner i'm then gonna you know have more biscuits have ice cream whatever it is and it, it, it part of it is about kind of understanding okay you've had one meal which you didn't plan or you know it wasn't perfect that doesn't matter um and what one way i like to frame it is what would you say to your kid if if your kid literally just did what you did what would you say to them would you say start again tomorrow doesn't matter just just roll with it or would you be like look it was just one meal like it was one thing it's okay just you know do your do the best you can with the rest of the day i i I love your take on the bedtime thing because i fall into that trap all of the time where you're like right it's been a long and busy day the baby's settled in my arms we're going to go upstairs i'm going to go on my phone now for 45 minutes but often like you say the way all of the social media websites are configured now it's like you don't have control over that 45 minutes because you get pulled into being served videos from people you aren't interested in listening to and it just makes you feel a lot more ag than yeah than, uh, than you know the calm state you're in a minute ago yeah. downstairs um so I've certainly tried to put some boundaries. I mean, I, ideally, I was chatting to um, Anna Martha, who's a psychotherapist, a few episodes ago, um, and she said her and her partner don't allow phones in the bedroom at night. Yeah. Um, and she said that has just 
positively impacted their relationship because you start being a bit resentful if someone's more interested in their phone than the other um, so that's really something me and my partner should do but then on the flip side you're like well I've had a long day this is my headspace now to just you know get lost in the world of social media for a little bit but it's that lack of control that you've got and the content your Instagram just think you need to see or YouTube think you need to see um, and that does impact mood stress levels and probably impacts the, the way you sleep as well yeah 100 percent. one one easy swap i say easy it's not easy that i always refer to social media as cheap dopamine because mm, yeah definitely. We, we we always look for a dopamine hit and um we we can get we we get dopamine from putting effort into something and seeing a reward and getting satisfaction from it and it's really easy to get that from social media it's really easy to get that from food and that's where a lot of people kind of go to when actually what they're looking for is an emotional change or emotional state change within their body and it, it's about trying to find other sources that can do that so for, for bedtime a better one it, because you can still have that hour headspace is trying to read a book mm. but a literal book a physical book a, a physical book <laughs> those, those those things you could actually write on the paper yeah um, yeah if, if you go to a museum you might find one <laughs> um so it with, with that said it's a lot easier said than done and the the best way to think about it is know that the first time is going to be really difficult because you will have this itch in your head that's like no i no i i don't i want to read this book but i don't want to read this book now you know i want to go on my phone um and mm. know you're going to have that itch and just be like okay no actually today i'm not going to do that and just push through and just use your grit and resilience to I, I mean we're parents the amount of things we have to get through is remarkable we we can do this for one night but do it for one night and then the next morning think okay what how do i feel do i feel different today do i feel more positive do i feel more negative did i sleep better is, was my sleep quality did i feel like it was better or worse and then yeah quite often the improvement as soon as you connect those dots and the, a, a lot of this is what i do with my clients as well particularly drinking as well because a lot of clients don't want to stop drinking and i don't i, I don't want to stop people from drinking um, no no I, I don't think people need to but when it's sort of one or two as a coping mechanism and it's affecting sleep and it's five nights out of seven that's where i'm a bit like well look quality of life might be better if you kind of cut it back to two times a week um and then it's a they do it and it's like okay how did you feel it's like well i felt sharp in the morning mm. um you know my, my I, I woke up sprung out of bed normally you know i'm dead to the world until my first coffee um which, which i completely understand because i love coffee but but it's about connecting how, how you feel with the changes that you made and then all of a sudden the second night when you're like okay like it's fresh in your mind it's the second night i can scroll social media i can read my book well, you know, if you've got a good book, you've got a good cliffhanger, you want to go back to it anyway. But um, you, you will then kind of know, well, actually, I know when I read my book, I feel better. And then tomorrow when I feel better, I'll be able to have better quality time with my kids. Um, or I'll be more productive at work. I'll be able to finish early because I'll get everything done. And, and, and it's about connecting those dots. And that's what makes it easy. Well, that, that's how to make it easier and to make these habits stick. Um, and then the other thing with that as well, because it always happens, is people relapse complacency comes in and it's just knowing that that is going to happen we're human we yeah. have emotions we're on a journey you know we're never always perfect we're never we're rarely perfect as it is <clears throat> but it's just knowing that okay if you do relapse that's fine it happens you've noticed it let's crack on let's get back on track yeah i think it and things quickly become the new normal and it's all about the muscle memory i remember like the fact that i went 12 months without any drop of alcohol so I, i've never been a big drinker you know i don't get drunk very often because i like to be on the ball in the morning but for me the biggest challenge was the social events so like the barbecues yeah. through the summer like i i, I struggled i was like, oh, i'd love to have a cider now but i, I was in too deep i was like i'm not going to give yeah. i'm not going to cave so and it was more managing expectations of others because when someone yeah. asks you tom what are you drinking you say i'm not uh drinking alcohol i just have a lemonade they're like oh why is that as if your decision is judging them for one. drinking yeah. um so that was and i had all these grand plans over christmas to i was going to order like a crate of cider in from you know my favorite 
orchard in um, in Devon. But my return to alcohol has been quite muted. I mean, I have um, I had a one pint in the garden over the weekend since Christmas. I think I've had maybe four pints. Um, so it just shows that you know I didn't really need it that much and. It's okay to go to those social events and not have a drink if if you want to. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But then it's it's okay to have a drink as well. But but I th- I think if if you're going to it and you know you're not going to drink, um, depending on who the social event is with, if it's with family, it's just giving them a heads up and being like, look, yeah, this this is what I'm doing. I, you know, I'm not going to drink. I'm running a half marathon. My training's going pretty well. I I know it might be a bit strange that I'm not drinking. I'd really appreciate if you just respect that and then ho- yeah. hopefully they do not not always but um you know you, you you've done what you can and a lot of the times you can then mitigate that social peer pressure yeah definitely so one question i, I did want to ask so mm. if um because i know there'll be dads watching this really struggling to find any time to do any form of workout maybe they're struggling in motivation like where does someone in that position that feels like their life just doesn't have any flexibility where can they start in making these small tweaks to maybe carving out some time even if it's a five ten minute hit workout but trying to incorporate it into your life which i know sounds really easy to say but um putting music on in the kitchen and just dancing around moving your body i think that's a really fun way to do it and if you've got if teenagers they probably won't want to do that with you um especially if you're playing <laughs> venga boys or something but um you know if if you've got toddlers or little little kids um i i, I put poppy on the bounce uh, not on the bounce on the um baby carrier with okay. me and then and then i sort of just dance around the kitchen whilst um katie does her kind of workout in in the playroom with the, with the music going it's also knowing that five minutes is better than nothing like nobody nobody's expecting you to hit pbs or to do anything extraordinary it's it's just a case of trying to do some body weight workouts i mean if it's some press-ups even press-ups on your knees or squats or just some high knees some mountain climbers um i i, I can send a home workout over to you so you can include it if you'd like on on any show notes that you have so there's yep. something there yeah um, definitely but but it's just knowing five minutes is better than nothing um and you know whether it's getting the family together to go for a walk after dinner set grand plans of thinking i'm going to train for 60 minutes 60 minutes is a long time you know and and you're 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 setting yourself up for foul and i i mean some of my clients we literally have three 30 minute body weight workouts per week two of which are at the weekend because you know you you don't have work constraints at the week or th- this dad doesn't have work constraints at the weekend and the other one is we hope that one of the five nights during the week he gets his daughter to bed at a time where he can then do it and you know yeah. if he can great sometimes he does four workouts which is amazing other weeks he just does the two on the weekends and it it's knowing that you know that that's okay it's just trying to plan it into your day when when you think there's a high probability of being able to do that workout kids yeah. are in bed either in the morning or in the night nap time is another good time or, or at the weekend and if you're the dad of a newborn babies obviously do this very safely make great weights so obviously if you have got <laughs> um if you have got music on then um yes. you can um, combine bonding with them with a bit of a workout, just steady, steady lifts in the air to the left and right. Um. And, and, and just, do, do you know what we, we I've recently launched a um, a kind of like a, a, a dad community for health and fitness. The goal is to bring dads together, give them a training program, give them nutrition advice. It's yeah. it's it, it's it's super low cost with the goal of being able to help as many people as possible. But we did the first live workout at the weekend, so so I'm doing live workouts every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And um, he, his, his wife got a fantastic photo of him doing squats with his, his daughter, exactly that, doing that. Um, oh, amazing. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a great option. It's a fantastic option. Um, yeah. And one of the most important concepts in resistance training is something called progressive overload, where you increase weight over, the, over time. <laughs> and as the baby and toddlers grow, that fits the bill, it's perfect. <laughs> absolutely i didn't think of that brilliant yeah 
So I've been doing this with all my guests, just quick fire questions um, to close out the episode. So there's three questions. So the first one is knowing what you know now, what parenting advice would you give yourself before you became a parent? I, I, I've got two, actually, if I can okay. hijack that trend. Um, yep. Firstly, um, everything is just a phase. <laughs> Whether it's great, I'm sorry to say it's just a phase. If it's awful, I'm very happy to say it's just a phase. Everything changes at some point. Um, I used to have amazing coffees with Bo, and Bo would have poached eggs on toast. Doesn't ha it actually happened this morning, but it's not happened in months. Um, mm. It changes. And then um, the, the other bit of advice is don't listen to advice from anyone else. Just do what <laughs> works for you because, you know, there, there might be something somebody says you have to you you know better than anyone your your content pushes this and rightfully so you know someone might say this this is what you need to do do what works for you and absolutely you know. yeah what what you said what, there what you about, said there um, about um, little phases little and routines, phases and routines. Cause Cause with the newborn, newborn days, days with my first, with my first like i would come down with him at like, him at like 5 a.m when he woke when up and i'd baby and wear him and, him and pop a film pop on, a film on um, make a um, coffee make a coffee and i thought oh and you know i'd do that with me and then i didn't actually realize my life is completely different now because not only have i got uh mia luca is awake at six so i had to i had to quickly realign my expectations that journeying to the newborn days with mia was going to look a lot different to um to um to when I was with when Luca, I was with so Luca. yeah, so yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Question two: What's the one thing you feel you need to work on as a parent? I think it's slowing down, to be honest okay. with you, because partly through your content and partly through um, reading up a lot about meltdowns and tantrums, um, mm. you, you you know that toddlers co-regulate and your emotions that you have and the stress that you're holding, the anxiety that you're holding, the desire to do something is in the atmosphere and the, and the the toddlers the kids pick up on it and for me one thing i've noticed is i will always throw a meltdown when i'm rushing and trying to get somewhere and yeah it, <laughs> it, it it took somebody saying that on a podcast for me to realize oh that's why it happens at the worst time i can you know always think of and for me one thing i'm working on now is given more time if we want to go somewhere and, and we need to be there at a certain time so mm. if Bo turns around and says I want to put my shoes on um, not quite that articulately but if he says y you know I want to put my shoes on having that time where he can do it and we can still leave to get to wherever we need to be, go on time but also I think I was really guilty of when we just go for a walk in the morning you know thinking okay we need to get on that walk we need to be doing that walk why are we not on that walk when it's just like doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if no, you take I know. twenty minutes or forty minutes. You, you know, it's what matters is Bo's happy. Bo enjoys it, and we we have that that kind of bond. And for me, it's slowing down. You say quick fire questions. I like I. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I've realised I'm not being quick with them. So for me, it's 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 slowing down, and it's um, working at for me Bo's pace at the moment. Yeah. And um, yeah, working at Bo's pace instead of my pace. It's interesting what you said there about the morning walk. So um, Luca turned two just as we went into the first lockdown. So I was fortunate enough um, once we were actually able to get out and about to get out walking with him all of the time, um, every morning before working from home. And obviously that can come with some stress if you're trying to say, we need to go this way, we need to go that way. But certainly yeah. when they're, or we need to do this and that, we need to go to this shop. Yeah. Certainly when they're early toddler years, it really doesn't matter you just need to go with the flow so i got to the point where you know i would just let him lead the way where do you want to go today we could pop to yeah. greg's and get a coffee we could pop into asda and have a look round and maybe pick one or two things on a day and one of the best things i used to do with him in the toddler years it wasn't like soft play or anything like that on a thursday i used to have like a full day with him whilst my wife worked and i used to drive us to the sh uh, a shopping mall nearby and I used to literally just walk in no expectations and just hold his hand and let him lead the way and we'd go into the clothes Love shop it. we'd look at the shoes we'd go for food and that those were <laughs> probably some of the best days of my life <laughs> uh, no, I, <laughs> no, bet. I, I, I really enjoyed those uh, those days with him and that was 
completely no expectations from me and just sort of going yeah. with the flow so yeah it makes it makes a massive difference not to say the the mount danes and tantrums didn't occur on those occasions no. i i read a book called hunt gather parent and it was really interesting and to con- condense it down and the the main thing i took away is the western style of parenting is predominantly a power struggle where it's like i i need you to do this you mm. need to do this to me you need to do this whereas the parenting style in indigenous communities is very much a collaboration and you, you know they'll the, the toddler will see the the mum making some food and they'll come over and they'll try and make it and the mum doesn't correct the mum doesn't the mum just lets them do it and then kind of slowly teaches them um of course they still have boundaries if if there's a job that isn't safe yeah. they they say no and they say you watch but um <coughs> I, I i think that's quite important too and it's exactly as you just said it's literally letting the letting the toddler letting the little one lead it and giving them the autonomy so they know that you know it's not just mummy and daddy tell me to do things and i must do things which you know you and i know is not going to go down well um yeah it is very much uh i can make decisions too and i have that that kind of power and i think in our culture as well like that m- way of parenting is maybe seen as a bit permissive um yeah. and it's going to lead to a child developing as a needy child or as a child that always gets their own way but it isn't about that at all no. like you, you mentioned about co-sleeping earlier like we co-slept and i get both parents need to be on the same page with this like me mm-hmm. and my wife, wife were so we co-slept with luca for four and a half years until mia came along and it as soon as mia came along luca literally said to us like he had his own bedroom anyway but he slept with us um he said i want to go in my own bedroom tonight and we were like wow. okay and um and that was that he's been in his own bedroom yeah. ever since you know he goes to school he's just as independent as the next child but i think we've sort yeah. of got lost a little bit in our culture that you know even a, a child co-sleeping is a needy dependent child but i think if you get that dependence breeds independence in certainly yeah. in kids um yeah and it it definitely is true um so one of the things i try to do with the dad vibes is maybe squash some of those myths well well well, i think all all somebody needs to do is look at the research of homes without fathers and look at Mm. the outcomes of those children compared to those with children yeah and you know a, a strong stable home is one of the best things you know a, a, a child can have or a, a role model as well because i understand some homes might not have have both parents yeah. it's, it's having that secure attachment and um you know the, the the kid will thrive if if they know that they have a safe space to come back to absolutely yeah on to the third and final quick fire um <laughs> what is the best thing about being a parent seeing how quickly kids can develop and change and constantly being amazed by what comes out of Bo's mouth what he understands what he can do and um i i I think i think it's literally just being a fly on the wall for me Mm. that's one of the best thing or not being a fly on the wall because i'm very active and i always get involved but just watching Bo's progression and seeing him develop and just seeing how amazing it is um if that makes sense i'm not sure if that's a very good answer oh absolutely um, yeah, certainly with Bo, you're about to enter a really like magical phase now that two to three years old, they develop so much um, in terms of their language and their independence and things like that. And with Luca now, he started school in September, so he's just turned five and, you know, he's writing, he's reading sentences. We live in Wales, so he's starting to speak Welsh because we do a bit of a Welsh curriculum. So it's unbelievable how quickly um, they change as well that's incredible what what's what's your favorite part of parenting my favorite part of parenting um i would say my favorite phase so far has been toddlerhood so i really enjoyed toddlerhood because i was fortunate enough to be able to be there every day because we worked from home um but i think the favorite part of parenting is just having someone need you um is, is really nice the fact that luca looks to me for guidance he looks to me for direction um which which is really lovely because in my head i'm sort of still like a 21 year old lad (laughs) but really i'm a 35 year old man dad of two (laughs) Uh, unbelievable (laughs) 
Yeah, and with two kids, a lot more yeah. responsibilities. Well, thanks for chatting to me today, Chris. Really appreciate it. I hope um, the parents have been able to get a nice insight into maybe how they can start making healthy tweaks to their life. Um, and if you're happy to share um, a workout plan, I can add that to the show, show notes so people Absolutely. can grab that. I'm sure we'll touch base very soon and, of course, have you on for another episode in the future. Oh, I'd absolutely love that. I'd love that. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much for having me. Cool. Well, thanks for your time, mate, and we'll chat soon. Cool. I'll speak soon.